Thank you for joining us on this Friday night and our 24-hour marathon celebrating 10 years of the green space here at WNYC. I'm John Schaefer. I host the New Sounds program each night uh, and the Gig Alert every morning and our Soundcheck podcast series. And because I've been at WNYC since the invention of electricity, <laughs> 10 years seems like the blink of an eye to me. Um, in fact, the very first public event here in this room was one of my soundcheck programs in which uh, my featured guest was the late, great Lou Reed. <laughs> Funny story, he cursed twice on the air. Dropped two F-bombs into the middle of a song. We were on a 10-second delay, caught both of them before they got to air. Um, but uh, just Lou being Lou. But one of the other things that was on that very first program was a string quartet, the quartet known as Ethel, doing a world premiere of a piece we had commissioned from uh, the composer Osvaldo Golihoff. So having a string quartet represent that form and uh, contemporary music seemed like a great idea for this 24-hour marathon. What you're about to hear is one of New York's best and brightest young string quartets. The Ataka Quartet play Beethoven, they play Haydn in concert halls and in church crypts, as it turns out. But they also play the music of our time, the, the complete string quartets of John Adams, the music of Paola Prestini, and tonight, the music of the Pulitzer Prize winning composer, Caroline Shaw. Uh, what you're about to hear is all music taken from their forthcoming record called Orange, music of Caroline Shaw, which the Ataka Quartet will release on Friday, a week from today. But they're here to play some of it for us tonight. You'll get a chance to meet them in a bit. For the moment, please welcome to the green space, the Ataka Quartet. <laughs>
That was on track by Caroline Shaw. Uh, we have uh, two more pieces before we do a little interview session with the, the, the very infamous John Schaefer. Um, the next piece is called Limestone and Felt, and it's actually a duo for viola and cello, and uh, we just felt it was uh, really necessary to include that also on this album that we have coming out called Orange by Caroline Shaw. Uh, limestone and Felt is basically uh, just juxtaposing the two textures of limestone and felt against each other, um, and it's something as simple and beautiful as that, and uh, we hope you enjoy that. Afterwards, we're going to be playing a piece called Plan and Elevation, which is based on the botanical gardens of Dumbarton Oaks in Washington, D.C. Um, it's a five-movement piece, but runs together seamlessly, um, culminating in a scene with the mighty beech tree, which if you've ever seen the beech tree of Dumbarton Oaks, it's, um, it's basically the largest tree you've ever seen in a city, and it overwhelms you with the, the depth of, of, uh, of spirituality the earth has to offer you. Um, and we hope that uh, Planet Elevation offers you that same glimpse at what the Earth has to offer. So, uh, but before that, Limestone and Felt, and following that, Planet and Elevation. Thank you. 
The Ataka Quartet playing the music of Caroline Shaw live here at the Green Space. And that work is called Plan and Elevation. Let me introduce you to the members of the Ataka Quartet. Uh, our violinist, Amy Schroeder. And Keiko Tagunaka. You heard briefly from Nathan Schramm, the violist. He referred to me as infamous, and I tried to take offense, and I just couldn't do it because it's pretty much on the nose. And the, uh, the cellist is Andrew Yee. All of the music you're hearing is on their new record called Orange, which comes out on Friday. And Andrew, let me ask you about plan and elevation. Uh, Nathan referred to Dumbarton Oaks as, as kind of an inspiration for that piece. Uh, all I know about Dumbarton Oaks is that Stravinsky wrote a concerto named after it. Right. So for, for anyone else who is similarly benighted about Dumbarton Oaks, illuminate for us. Uh, Dumbarton Oaks is a lovely estate that has uh, a beautiful garden. Um, and uh, the, way that it is, the way that it is arranged is that um, each, each landscape you find yourself in y is completely unique and you can't see any of the other gardens, and then you turn a corner and suddenly you're in another garden. 
and uh, that's the way that it was it was built. It was built specifically that way, uh, which is what the title refers to: plan and elevation. Each garden is on a, a sort of a different elevation, so um, uh, and uh, each each movement is a sort of portrait of a different section of the garden. So you huh. have the ellipse, and you have cutting garden, and you have the herbaceous border, the uh, orangery, and the beech tree. And, and Amy, you guys did a video about and in the orangery. Yes, we did. Uh, actually, we had the pleasure of working with um, filmmaker Tristan Cook, who um, is just an amazing filmmaker who works a lot with classical musicians. And um, he's a huge admirer of Caroline Shaw, as we all are. And he took a film crew of, I believe, four people out to Dumbarton Oaks. And, um, and we got to go out there as well and uh, film with them. And we're actually only in one of the movements of the film. But the rest of it is sort of a beautiful documentary about the grounds um, with the music in the background. Well, now, you know how music videos normally work is the band is miming <laughs> to their recording. Yes. How does it work with a string quartet? Well, that's a good question, um, <laughs> especially because the, the, the orangery actually uh, has some really amazing acoustics in it, but we, we didn't use them um, because we, we had our, our recording and um, we, we sort of, uh, am, I, is it al am I allowed to say that? Yeah, of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we, <laughs> Movie we, actually, magic. we practiced a lot with our own CD because obviously when we perform this music uh, quite often, things change, you know, our tempos change. and. So we had to really play with ourselves the best we possibly could on the CD. And um, yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> OK. Uh, Andrew, um, you, you mentioned how you know, one garden, you, know, you turn a corner and suddenly you're in another. So those gardens are, they are literally ataka. They that's are right. attached to each other. You betcha. Um, but why is the quartet called ataka? Uh, we're called ataka uh, because we, uh, this, we formed 16 years ago. And uh, we were going to do what a couple. were you, nine? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we were the Muppet Babies. I think you heard of us. Um, um, and then, uh, so, uh, we, we were about to do a competition. We needed a name. And uh, we sort of fought for a couple months about it. And uh, it was, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning before the deadline. And so we just opened a music dictionary and said every single word before quartet that sounded good. And so... Uh, we can always change it later, but uh, <laughs> but the uh, uh, basically just we liked we liked that it sort of had this connotation of being um, attached and you know always going on and playing the next piece of music, which has been sort of a cradle for us uh, in the quartet, always always devouring new new music. Yeah. Yeah. And Amy, how did you guys first come to meet Caroline Shaw, become familiar with her music, and what led to this this new record? Well, actually, I really like how Andrew tells this story, so I'm just going to tell it a similar way. But um, that Andrew actually knew, and, and Nathan also knew Car Caroline previous to making this album, and um, both of oh, them... I should say, uh, Caroline is, is a violinist herself. Yes, she is. She's a fantastic violinist and an amazing singer, and um, she's in a group called Roomful of Teeth. That's and a vocal octet. Yes, and Andrew said, oh my gosh, I cannot wait. We're going to, to Vail this summer, and Room Full of Teeth is going to be there. I can't wait for you guys to hear them. So we got to know them a bit over the week, and then when we heard their first performance, it was like nothing I've ever heard before. And I couldn't believe myself, and I was overcome with emotion. And um, as Andrew said, he started ugly crying during the, um, <laughs> the performance and looked down the row. And there I was with probably snot coming out of my nose and also <laughs> ugly crying myself. And um, it was just one of the most amazing experiences to hear Partita for Eight Voices, which is the piece that Caroline won the Pulitzer Prize for. And um, since then, we were just addicted to her music and her energy. And um, I think you know it was just an obvious choice to record her pieces and to continue playing them uh, forever, hopefully. <laughs> well, uh, one of the great things about Caroline Shaw's music, if you don't know Room Full of Teeth, you know, they're this splendid vocal octet that, that draws on vocal traditions from around the world, not just Western classical music. Things that sound very avant-garde but turn out to be like centuries old in places like Mongolia or Central Africa. Um, but the piece you guys started with, Entracht, exists, you know, she's, she's played that with both of her bands, with the vocal octet, Room Full of Teeth, and with her string quartet, Acme. So, you know, that kind of vocalism, Andrew, seems to be in a lot of her writing for strings as well. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And that's, I think, why we like her music so much, is because she, uh, 
she understands uh, that sort of vocal line, but from a violinist perspective. And, um, and the way we rehearse, uh, we do a lot of singing uh, to rehearse. It sort of, it, it sort of, it cuts straight to, uh, to what we want the phrase to be. And so uh, when we rehearse her pieces, it's sort of just like a slam dunk. It just, it just sort of falls into place. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Amy, uh, Andrew was talking about, you know, the idea of a taka, you know, on to the next piece without a break. You know, you guys go from the classics to the contemporary, and, and it, it's all part of a continuum, it seems. Um, yes. So, so you've worked with John Adams, you've worked with Paula Prestini, now with Caroline Shaw. How different an experience is it when you can actually call up the composer and say, what did you mean in measure 48 there? Oh my gosh, it's, it's amazing because, um, you know, we're, we're actually working on playing the complete Beethoven quartets right now, and if I could call He doesn't Beethoven, answer your calls, Yeah, does he? I mean, <laughs> so many questions that we debate um, for months about tempos and, you know, dynamics and what articulation, what did he mean by that, you know? But to be able to talk to the composer and sort of just get a feeling for what they were feeling in the moment that they wrote it, um, you know, it's, it, it just really helps us to come to the sound uh, that we're looking for, basically. Um, and Caroline's very flexible with that, I would say. She, uh, she obviously has a very clear idea of uh, the way she wants things to sound, but she... That would not have been a part of it. <laughs> I broke the mic. <laughs> Yes, so uh, she's very flexible in that when she hears something that wasn't maybe exactly as she had heard it before or in her mind, she says, oh wow, that's actually really interesting. Let's go further in that direction or you know, let's, let's try this. And sometimes even in the studio, she, she rewrote things, which was mm. really awesome. Yeah. All right, so uh, you guys have played Haydn and Beethoven and, and, and contemporary music. And um, I mentioned in introducing the quartet, Andrew, that you've played them in concert halls and also in at least one church crypt. That's right. a and you guys are doing another crypt concert at the end of this month, right? That's right, yeah. We're gonna, be, yeah, we're gonna be playing Caroline's, Caroline's music down in the crypt. I mean, I, 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 love, I love the crypt. Like, Caroline is such like a, sort of like a sunshine quartet <laughs> composer for me. But, it, but uh, it's gonna be amazing to, to hear the music down there because... The uh, crypt of what church? Church, Church of Intercessions yes. up in Harlem, yeah. Uh, it's an amazing space, um, and it just has this, uh, just like a like a ten second reverb. Yeah. We did the Heiliger Danke song, the Beethoven there, and uh, did the Seven Last Words there, and um, yeah. And April thirtieth. That'll be April thirtieth, yeah. right? Yeah. So next Friday is the release of Orange, which is this album of Caroline Shaw's music that the Ataka Quartet is playing for us tonight, um, and. I, I can't leave the stage because my producer, Karen, will kill me if I don't say two words to you, Andrew, and those are Star Wars. Oh. Go. <laughs> I, did a, I did an arrangement of Star Wars that people seem to like. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it was actually a gift to Keiko. Um, she, she, was, uh, she, was, uh, she stayed, when she came to the United States, she stayed with a, with a, with a couple who were big Star Wars fans, and so I did a Star Wars arrangement for Keiko as a, as a gift to those people. So. Okay. Check it like. out on YouTube. Oh, also the new trailer came out today. Did anybody yes, see it? That's oh my god. <laughs> chills. Wow. Not like Lion King chills, but like good Star Wars chills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Punctum is the work we're going to hear next. Yeah. More music from Caroline Shaw. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Ataka Quartet. <laughs>